Hey there, it's Clay with modernlove.life. In this video, we're gonna be talking about three steps to get your ex back. You may know from other videos that I've put out there that I don't believe in any sort of one size fits all approach to all of this. Um, you know, many times I see people out there on other channels, on other places on the internet talking about like, hey, you know, just, just do this, just blindly follow this path and, you know, just follow it with 100% faith, no matter what your instinct is telling you, no matter what your gut is telling you, no matter what your previous experience is telling you, just basically turn your brain off and do this. Um, but I, I, I don't want you to just turn your brain off. I want you to keep your brain turned on and to use it to adjust course as we're moving forward. But uh, there are a couple common patterns that I have seen after talking to a lot of people recently. Uh, and I did want to go ahead and talk about like, okay, this is what I'd probably recommend that you do most of the time. Now, of course, there are gonna be times when it makes sense to do something else. So keep your brain turned on, don't just turn it off and think like, okay, this is the one size fits all, like holy grail, just do no contact and then make your ex jealous kind of plan. Because, well, first of all, that's probably not a very good plan, but I want you to keep your brain turned on and uh, figure out what you need to do moving forward from here, okay? But anyway, the first thing that we typically want to do is we want to get our ex on the same team as us. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons why relationships don't work out. But if you were to boil it all down, I can usually identify that, you know, at some point, the two people in the relationship either never really fully saw each other as being on the same team, or they went from seeing each other as being on the same team to seeing each other as being on opposite teams. Now, of course, being on opposite teams can take on an extreme role like, um, you know, saying, you know, fighting, arguing, things like that. Um, but it, it can also take on a much more subtle role as well, too. Like maybe you've been following too much dating advice out there and you, you say, okay, well, you know, my, my partner is a man, therefore that means I need to do this. Or my partner is a woman, therefore it means I need to be that. When you start to see them as something other than a human being, then they start to become something other than you. And then it's not a far stretch to say, okay, we're on opposite teams. I'm a man, she's a woman. All women are this way. All women are just out to use you. I need to be high status. Otherwise she's gonna cheat on me with like a million dudes or something like that, right? Or, or you know, the opposite, right? All men only want this. Therefore I need to give him the thrill of the chase. Otherwise he's gonna, you know, go out and sleep with like a hundred supermodels or something like, like you, you know. Uh, people have these like insecurities that come from not seeing their partners being on the same team. There's like other ways that this shows up as well too, you know, attachment styles, love languages, personality types and all that stuff. But basically it's some form of like not seeing each other as being on the same team. Not seeing each other as being on the same team can also look like, okay, I don't feel like I can comfortably express myself around my partner. I think I have to hold myself back. I think I need to walk on eggshells. Um, I think I need to overanalyze things that they're doing um, or whatever, right? These are ways that not being on the same team shows up. So what we really wanna do as our first move in most cases here is to get on the same team. Really just enroll your partner to be on the same team with you. If you can get on the same team, then so much other stuff is just gonna get like way easier, okay? The communication is gonna get way easier, the connection is gonna get way easier, any misunderstandings are gonna be able to sm be smoothed over very, very easily. Uh, things are just going to be much more simple. So let's just get on the same team. That's typically the first step in all of this. The second step is to build an emotional connection. In the past, you know, a few videos here, I've been talking about what is the most important thing. If you've been paying attention, uh, what is the most important thing uh, from what I've been saying in the past few videos? Um, if you said the emotional connection. Give yourself a thumbs up, and while you're at it, also give this video a thumbs up as well too, because it's gonna help us with the YouTube algorithm. Um, it, it, it does help us, it's a free way to support this channel, hit that thumbs up button. But um, yeah, the emotional connection. So you're on the same team, that's step number one. Step number two is to build the emotional connection between the two of you. If the two of you are gonna get back together, if the two of you are gonna have a great relationship, then it's gonna be because you have built some sort of strong emotional connection. It's not gonna happen because you've eliminated all other dating prospects or because you know, you, you've somehow you know, proven that you can master this attachment style or because you're you know, man enough or woman enough or something like that. It's gonna happen because the two of you actually are connected to one another and the two of you actually enjoy spending time with one another. If this happens, then um, you know, what is gonna naturally and organically grow out of an emotional connection is gonna be commitment, trust, 
a relationship, right? Uh, so let's actually build this emotional connection. By the way, we do have a whole video playlist on what we call advanced relational skills. You can check that out right up there in the video card. Uh, a lot of people have said it's been really helpful for them in terms of building this emotional connection. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, having an emotional connection between you and your partner is going to be absolutely critical. Uh, many times I've, I've seen people try to connect on surface level things like, you know, work things, gossip about mutual people that they know, TV shows, video games, uh, you know, things like that, right? And it's fine, you know, you, you can potentially connect on stuff like that. It, it, it's not impossible, but it's going to be a lot more easy to connect on the emotional level because one thing that we all have in common you know we might not all play the same video games we might not be from the same hometown we might not know the same people but one thing that we all have in common is our emotional experience you know we've all felt at some point sad afraid anxious hopeful um, optimistic pessimistic all these sorts of things right let's go ahead and connect on that level rather than just like grasping for conversation starters and like you know ridiculous things to just keep the conversation going because you know we're, we're not just trying to keep the conversation going for the sake of keeping it going it's not like if you talk for long enough somehow they're gonna fall in love with you and they're gonna want to get back together with you uh, what we want to do is we want to actually connect and have a high quality interaction not a long interaction or many interactions, but we want to have a high quality connection. And that's where the emotional connection comes into play. So let's connect directly on the emotional level by, uh, you know, connecting on shared emotional experiences that we've had. And, you know, sure, the circumstances could be different. What made me feel anxious is probably different from what made you feel anxious. But we can connect on that feeling of anxiety or the feeling of fear or hope or, or optimism or excitement or, or whatever it might be. And that can be a great way to form an emotional connection. And then the third thing that you want to do is you want to do both of these things consistently over time, be on the same team and connect and communicate clearly. And what's going to happen as you consistently do this is you're going to start to build trust. Now, trust is where the whole five stages of getting back together fall into play. A lot of times people know me most from a series of videos that I did about the five stages your ex goes through in getting back together. If you don't know what that is, or if you need a little refresher, there's a video card right up there for a playlist on the five stages. Feel free to check it out. A lot of people have said it's been super helpful for them in terms of understanding their ex's emotional world, and maybe you'll find it helpful too. But these five stages are a spectrum of trust. And as you start to build trust through consistency of being on the same team and connecting emotionally, you're going to start to experience these different uh, behaviors from your ex. So it can be a little bit confusing, but um, you know you might experience some hot and cold behavior, mixed messages, you know one word replies, um, active discouragement, all these sorts of things. And this can, these can be really confusing for a lot of people. But if you understand what's going on, and if you understand that this is really about trust, not them using you, not them being a jerk or anything like that, but most likely it's, it's just them dealing with their own trust issues and learning to trust themselves, learning to trust you, and learning to trust uh, your relationship with one another, then you're going to be able to navigate through these five stages and eventually work towards getting into a great committed relationship with one another. Now, of course, this is just a rough framework, obviously, because the, the specifics of your situation are going to be a little bit different from person to person. Um, but this is overall what I've recommended most people go through when it comes to saving their relationship. So um, if you do want some help with all of this, we actually do have some openings in our coaching program. Um, you can find a link for that down below in the description box, or you can just go to modernlove.life slash quiz, and you can fill out a little bit of an application form, just letting us know a little bit more about your situation. Then if it makes sense to do so, we'll just get on a call and, you know, you can talk about your situation with someone on our team. And then if that makes sense, then, you know, we can go ahead and talk about working together. If not, then, you know, no worries. At least you'll probably get some, some sort of, you know, resources on how to move forward. But if it does make sense for us to work together, we can absolutely talk about that. But uh, yeah, if you are interested in coaching to help you with your specific situation, then uh, please head on over to modernlove.life slash quiz. There was a bit of an issue with this uh, last week. I sent out an email to our newsletter letting people know about this, and uh, apparently a lot of people were super interested with it, and um, our, our, our calendar just got booked up solid, and people were coming to it and saying like, hey... There's no availability to book a call until next week. And it's like, yeah, you know, we, we, we got like 20 calls booked this week. And so sorry about that. But yeah, um, um, if, if, you, if, if it looks like our, our, our calendar is booked up solid, just it's 
probably because it is, um, and just go ahead and maybe check back in a day or two and see if there's some new openings uh, coming up. But yeah, if you do want some specific help with your situation, uh, you might be interested in our coaching program, please feel free to apply over at modernlove.life slash quiz. Once again, if you do like this video, be sure to like the video as well, and um, I will talk to you next time. Please take care.